Hi everyone, my name is Kurt Watinsky. Welcome. And this is one of a series of interviews I've been conducting as part of the More Housing Wisconsin project, which is sponsored by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, the Wisconsin Realtors Association, and the Wisconsin Builders Association. The general theme of the interviews is obviously housing, and more particularly, how do we generate more housing in Wisconsin communities? We have been meeting with local leaders, both from the private sector and the public sector. And the theme or the focus of today's conversation is going to be more on the expense of housing. Why is housing so expensive and what role do municipalities play perhaps in reducing or helping reduce the cost of new housing? joining me to kind of work through this and get a better understanding of the cost of housing to begin with is Steve DeClean. He's the president of Newman Companies, which uh, primarily focuses on, does a number of things, and you can tell us more about that, Steve, but it primarily focuses on residential development in Wisconsin and particularly in Southeast Wisconsin. And welcome, Steve, and thanks for joining me. Thanks, Kurt. Good to be here. Yeah, and, and what I... I'm going to ask some big, broad questions, and you could take it from there and, and focus on on the you know the areas that you'd like to. But in general, I think what we, local officials and staff and myself included would like to know is why is housing so expensive in Wisconsin? Why is there seemingly this gap between what people can afford and you know the ultimate end price for a, for a new home? Let's say. And, and what goes into, from a, a, a developer's perspective and a builder's perspective, what goes into that cost of that housing and, and where might some uh, costs be reduced by actions that local governments take? Um, is, there, is there a role for local government to reduce some of the costs that you incur in developing housing? Yeah, oh, uh, great. One of my favorite topics. Um, I'm sure. Let's, let's start with, Home Builder Economics 101, that this is not a high margin business. This is not high tech. This is, we, we build our business at the end of the day around a 10% net profit. And that is, that's about as much as the market will really afford a home building company. And don't trust me, that's, you can go to every publicly traded home builder's financial statements and look at it. And that's kind of what you'll see. So. When you say what drives what drives the cost of housing in Wisconsin, it's it's the cost. Like again, we're looking for ten percent. When we get that, that's like the holy grail of home yes. housing. Uh, you know, so there are there are some businesses that then say, well, why do you do that? You know, like so let's let's start with that, and yeah. we do because it's really pretty fun. So, um, but why does it cost too much to build a home? Why is the average and this is a true statistic. The average Waukesha County home, where we do a lot of business, the, if I go to the MLS and I do a search on new homes in Waukesha County, the average sale price is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, right. The rule of thumb. These are all like age old. The rule of thumb is you take the cost of a lot times five, and that's about where the housing shakes out. Okay. So said differently, it starts with the lot. Mm -hmm. I would hold in Waukesha County, they're, they're kind of too big. You know, like there's a lot of municipalities that really want to see a hundred foot wide lot. Well, that's going to get you to a hundred and thirty five to a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar lot, right? Well, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars lot times five is like a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. And that, that's how we lay in there. Okay. So the first problem we've got in the biggest obstacle to more affordable new home creation is we need smaller lots. You can't just take a big lot and put a small house up. It doesn't make sense. If you just say that to people, anecdotally, they feel it. But that's sort of the push from, from a municipality. It, it, it's, it's illogical. The economics don't work. You're, you're tied into the the most expensive part is the land, or I should say the riskiest part is the land. You need to match the house with the land. So um, yeah, by and large, the idea of a hundred foot wide lot serviced by water and sewer, municipal water and sewer, 
is really a pretty painful prospect. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where it starts. Um, so Steve, so so when I so so when I go to municipal conferences where there's administrators and maybe city engineers and stuff, we're talking or policymakers too, local policymakers. Why why can't developers just build 14, 1,500 foot square foot homes, and, and and in that way they'll be less costly and more, you know, starter. You know, young families can buy those homes. And you're saying, well, we got to start with the size of the lot and and allow for some density, and 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 maybe that would flow out of the smaller lot. You could have maybe smaller homes like that. Correct. When asked that question, I'm going to be sarcastic and I'm going to say, are you asking me to build a 1,500 square foot house on a half acre lot that cost me $150,000 to create? Yeah. You it's a good business decision. You know, it's it's almost preposterous when you get an opportunity to have a conversation. Good point. So yeah, fr from there, you know, we start with a smaller lot, which lends itself to a smaller house. And then, you know, we do need to talk about side setbacks. Yes. Um, you know, in I, I think I read a statistic that in Waukesha County versus Dane County. Okay. Um, over the last 10 years, we've developed about the same amount of acreage, okay? Okay. Um, but Dane County's got twice the lots out. Oh. Uh. And that's done through a combination of smaller lots and then different side setbacks. Um, there's a lot of places in Dane County with, with a, a side setback, a five foot side setback, which means you've got 10 feet between houses. Yes. You know, personal feeling, that's a little tight when given when given the free choice, we typically would do a seven and a half foot side setback, 15 feet between houses. You know, that gives a lot of people palpitations. And, and I think we need to get over that. I've never mm -hmm. seen anybody grill a hamburger in their side yard. <laughs> oh, um, you know, so to, to me, you know, a tighter neighborhood, houses closer together is a really good and positive thing. And I should tell you that where we have done it, we've had a lot of success. Um, so just that change in and of itself you know i think like i say the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house in waukesha county just with that change in and of itself a small lot and a smaller house i think we're kind of seeing and we've got communities where we do do that um, we're kind of seeing home valuation come out around five hundred and twenty thousand dollars. okay and that's a big move that is a big move mm -hmm. is it possible to get down to and I'm just asking this hypothetically, is it possible to get down to 300? What would it take to get down to $350,000 home? Um, that would never happen. Even okay. a 300 square foot house that you and I grew up in. Yes. Today, the cost to build that house. Okay. I, I think if we would build and sell that house today, I don't know what kind of house you grew up in, by the way. I grew up in a yeah. 12 square foot Cape Cod in Deep Pier, Wisconsin. There's no way we could put we could buy a farm, develop a subdivision with public standards, and sell that house for less than four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. There's just not that much saved when the house gets smaller. Mm hmm It's still yeah. yeah. And so what are some other factors that contribute to you know the cost the cost of a home? Um labor, I mean, do you have labor issues? I mean, it it yeah. seems like home prices have gone up exponentially say in the last five or six years maybe 10 years um since since the end of the you know the great recession is there yeah. other other factors that go into go into the reality of home yeah. prices i think the cost of lot creation and that upfront risk is a really really scary component of it it is too expensive to develop a subject and I, and I can I can kind of explain that way the market has shifted in regards yeah. to that. 30 years ago, there were just, I call them merchant developers. They would go buy a farm, they would go, you know, get it approved with the municipality and they would install the infrastructure and then they would sell lots to, to typically, quite frankly, undercapitalized builders, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. Business and, and Joe Public could go buy a lot, and then he could go negotiate a home building contract with a local construction, you know, home builder, right? Yep. It completely shifted. The upfront cost is so expensive that there's really no profit left in the lot sale itself. Okay. Okay. So now you're talking about a 20% margin on a lot is probably pretty good. So 
Imagine the math of going in there and spending $8 million to develop 100 lots, right? Developing them, selling them all over the course of five years, right? And your $8 million turns into $10 million. And by the way, you've worked your butt off the whole while and you've taken an enormous risk. It's like the worst investment I've ever heard of. You wouldn't do it and nobody's doing it anymore. Right. And my, my prediction is nobody's going to ever do it. Anymore. The only reason you would do that is if you had a home building company that needed to, to assure itself for a pipeline of land. Okay. And that's what we do. I mean, that's been why we've been successful. And there's just a handful of companies large enough in Wisconsin. You, the home builder market the market for people who do that, just build homes, has really shrunk drastically over the years. It's, right. We now, we, we used to plant 15 to 20,000 uh, houses a year. We now plant 5,000 a year. We are literally hand to mouth. And it is guys like me developing subdivisions one year ahead so that we can keep our home building partners in land. Uh, so it's a, yeah, it's a dynamic environment. Um, okay. Uh, but that's the way that I, I've seen it shifted is those costs have creeped, to your point, Kurt, kind of beyond beyond typical inflation. I think the cost of developing a subdivision and building home, for that matter, have exceeded wage growth for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would argue that we've seen more extreme inflation in home building and home development than we have in other areas of the world. I, okay. I, I suspect we held inflation at bay. By outsourcing things to different countries, well, you're not outsourcing home development and, and building. Right. So you know that's these are some of the obstacles I think we're up against. Um, as for specifics, I'll just kind of talk about some things that really drive this increased cost of land development. Um, yes. We talked about lot size. That that's if you did that and nothing else, you're you're winning. Okay. Um, the second most thing that's three times more savings than anything else we could possibly do. And that is, and this is a technical engineering conversation, but this is what we use to backfill sanitary trenches. Okay. Uh, we are forced to truck in granular material to backfill sanitary trenches. And municipalities, by the way, require that because they don't want their roads to settle. So they want to know that it's new stone trucked in, compacted. They don't want us to just take what we dug out of the hole and put it back in. But that's ten to twelve thousand dollars a lot. I would suspect when they first started doing that, it was two or three thousand dollars. But you know, the cost of gravel, the cost of trucking, really like we need to get trucking out of the equation. Okay. Uh, I think we probably need to rethink and re-standardize our backfilling standards because that that's ten to twelve thousand dollars a lot up front is keeping people out of the game. So, Steve, this would be part of the kind of the subdivision approval process or the conditions for that you need to comply with that the municipality Im imposes on the developer as a condition of approving their subdivision plan. Well, for each lot, you need to uh, make sure that the sewer line is backfilled. Right. Yeah, yeah, it would be a full engineering standard. Okay. And they, all, they all need to be challenged. And, and also, we need to be practical about the mathematics of this. If if my ten thousand dollars that I save, you know, it could result in some settling, and there will be road repairs down the way, right? It's never going to be ten thousand dollars a lot. I mean, the whole thing would have to settle out. So that's the municipality. That's the problem we've got. Is a municipality can say, okay, developer, we want you to spend ten thousand dollars per lot up front. So that we can guarantee ourselves that we're not going to spend two or three thousand dollars per lot down the road. You wouldn't you wouldn't make that decision if the municipality installed the subdivisions. So we um, okay yeah. understood. And that gets us to you know well the second most and maybe one of the most painful things that we spend as a developer, and that is that there's there's a contentious relationship between a developer and a municipality oftentimes. And that contention really starts it 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 really shows when it comes to the relationship with the, the municipal engineer and the engineers that they hire to oversee the development effort. 
Um, there is a municipality in Waukesha County where if we're going to develop a subdivision there and we're building our pro formas, we assume that we're going to pay $10,000 per lot for that municipality to hire an engineer to watch everything that we do. And I, they pass they pass along the engineering costs that they incur in kind of overseeing the project and and, and then they charge you guys. Yeah. And so now you create an environment where now there's another uh, this one's Washington County, but Germantown, I'm just going to call out as being on the opposite end of that. They have engineering on staff that they sort of see it as something that's their responsibility to take care of. They don't outsource that responsibility. And we pay two thousand dollars. And it's just in their approach to it that um, you've got a working relationship with that engineer rather than working through a firm where it gets outsourced to. And I think it's the, the problem is this is a really thorny thing to figure out how to, there's a lot of sides to this argument. But we do, I think we need to have some conversations between the Builders Association, the League of Municipalities about what exactly we're outsourcing. What should be the responsibility of a, of a municipality to pay? And what mm -hmm. would actually be required to pay? Because yeah. right now, I walk onto one of my sites and I've got work going on in two different places on that site. We're paying an inspecting engineer, actually two of them, one in each location to watch every single second while we're installing public. Again, you would never do that if it were your money. So that's that's the municipality contracting out expertise. They're they're purchasing expertise that they don't feel that they might have internally to oversee. Yeah. Or, or don't want to take the responsibility for it, even if they do have the even if they do have the expertise. And I, and I think we probably need to figure out a, a standard of which some expertise needs to be required from a municipality, mm -hmm. but we need some rules around how those costs are really thrust onto the developer. Mm -hmm. Everybody in town can name the engineers and the way that they operate in the cities that are they we know we're going to pay that. Okay. All right. All right, so we got size of the lot, um, you know, engineering costs that are passed on to the developer and uh, backfill. Is there any anything else on a, on a list, kind of a wish list of what communities should look at and maybe reconsider as far as passing along the cost to? Yeah, you know, then uh, all those, those are the big ones. There's yeah. Things like two to $4,000 a lot. Um, Kurt, I, I sent you a list, but we'll hit some of the hot spots. Sure. You know, what, what is sidewalks going in? Sidewalks should go in when the houses are built. A lot of municipalities want them all up front because they want to have a sidewalk from the time the first person moves in. I oh, by the way, a lot of people, a lot of developers say we need to eliminate sidewalks. I love sidewalks, so like my personal preference gets into this, right? Sure. But I love, I I, I want to live. My neighbor doesn't have them, and I wish it did. But when you do have a sidewalk requirement, I think we need to respect the fact that. This isn't the days where we're putting 100 lots on at once. We're putting phases on in really small chunks. I think we can afford to take some chances and put in the sidewalks when we build the houses rather than putting them all in up front. Because what happens is, number one, you thrust this cost onto a developer for sidewalks up front that they have to roll the dice on. Right. Um, more importantly, you, you end up busting up the bulk of the sidewalk anyway, ripping it out and repouring it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then if, if, if the sidewalk is put in at a different time, closer to when the house is actually built, would that be an additional cost that's put on to the, the builder? Home, the builder, yeah. 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 You pay it. And, and again, so I'm speaking from both sides because I'm yeah. the builder developer usually. It, it's, we spend, I think our budget is twelve to $1,400 just to remove and repair the sidewalk we broke. I see. Okay. Um, so, the, and then you just, you, you kind of respect too, though, like even without that, you got to respect when you're asking somebody to put something in all up front, right? Right. It's a little bit more of a problem for third party developers. I talk about how there's no more quote merchant developers. Like that's the sort of thing that really gets painful for people when you're making them, making people do it up front rather than ask them. Right. Um, other things are, you know, I think that. I think PUDs, PUDs get to be 
really expensive. Uh, you know, you enter into PUDs when the municipality doesn't have zoning that necessarily works for today's market. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what happens in our world is we come into a municipality that doesn't have a, a, a standard zone narrower lot. Yeah, like a traditional, what do they call it? Traditional, traditional neighborhood. Traditional yeah, neighborhood. yeah like. traditional neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of municipalities around here that like a hundred foot or a hundred and ten foot even is the smallest lot size that they have. Well, that that that's your seven eight hundred thousand dollar house. Like the second you didn't have that zoning category, that's all you're going to see. I, I, there's a lot of municipalities. Quite frankly, that's what they want. So we need to accept that fact. Um, but when you when they don't have the zoning, but they do want smaller lots, the reason that we're doing that is these PUDs give a municipality an opportunity to engage in a negotiation, get a developer to to pay for something in exchange for that. I'm having a hard time feeling like that's a really fair, honest conversation, you know. So I think there's probably three to five thousand dollars per lot extra requirements thrust upon us in exchange for those PUDs. Okay. So I don't think that was the intent of the PUD logs to skirt really more appropriate zoning. Yeah, it was to be create some flexibility instead of maybe it takes a lot more to change your actual zoning than maybe to put a layer of a PUD on uh, an overlay that that allows for some of the flexibility you're seeking. So it takes about 18 days to change your zoning. Yeah. It's, it's we're incented to have a different lot size. It's it's not hard, and and I think we need to get into really some general rules about what kind of zoning people should have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, not a hard thing to create, and it's it's something that's probably past due. All right, so Steve, I got to warn you that we're coming to the kind of limits on, on how much time I want to spend on the interview and how much time I have on this Zoom call and you too. But so are there any last minute things that uh, additional, I don't know, educational points you'd like to make the local officials about uh, cost reductions that, that could happen if communities made some adjustments in their process? Uh, yeah, you know, I'll say that, and, and we're, we're into this lately now, we're kind of branching out from around Southeast Wisconsin and we're working with municipalities on public private partnerships. And that has afforded some interesting opportunities to sit down early with city administrators, sometimes the, the mayor or village president and the engineering staff of the municipalities and going through the details of the, the subdivision development requirements. Mm -hmm. And when those parties are all in one room, and everybody's understands at the big picture what we're trying to accomplish. Um, it's been a fantastic experience. You know, we're developing lots in Beaverdam, Wisconsin, seventy-five thousand dollars a lot. It can be done. Mm -hmm. it, okay. That's a that's the average lot on I'm not lost in Waukesha County right now is two hundred and three thousand dollars. I mean, it's a now land is cheaper up there. There's a lot of things that go into that. Right. Important to note that. It doesn't need to be municipal subsidized if the parties that have decision making about the, the construction standards get together on day one and make sure everybody's on the same page. I would encourage everybody to start doing that. Okay. All right. Well, Steve, we we wanted to to hear from you know a land developer and a house and a home builder company about you know ways that costs could be reduced by the actions that municipalities take, maybe some changes that municipalities could engage in. And you've certainly provided us some things to think about. And um, and I encourage communities to kind of look at their own processes and, and procedures and rules and regulations and maybe make some adjustments to allow for less expensive homes to be built, but it's gonna take it's going to take density. It's going to take uh, some changes to maybe to some of the procedures that the municipalities already have in place. Steve, I really appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. I know you have a, you know, we could talk for hours about this topic, but I, I thank you for the 20, 25 minutes you've given us. So thanks for taking up. You're welcome. Bye bye.